Sirius. Travelers, what are some of the creepiest slash scariest experiences you've had abroad? Story 1. I was walking around in a town in Algeria. I wandered into a neighborhood and noticed there were hardly any people out. A little further and there were literally no people out. I started to feel a little uneasy, and then I see an extremely tall man walking towards me, straight towards me, obviously with intent. He gets closer and I see an older gentleman with a long gray beard and wearing a gray tunic. I stop, he comes right up to me and says, in pretty good English, you're not safe here, we need to get you off the street. I say, okay, and he says, follow me. We walk a few blocks and we come to a door, he says, wait here a minute, and he goes inside. He opens the door again and invites me in. When I get inside, there are maybe a dozen men. They're all dressed in black and they are staring absolute daggers at me. Greybeard lays into them, starts shaking his fist at them and gets really worked up. Then one of the younger guys goes into the kitchen and brings out some tea and cookies and offers them to me. So I'm drinking tea and trying to smile and one of the younger guys asks where I'm from and I say, the States, and he starts talking about the CIA and stuff. And then I say, you think the CIA is bad here, let me tell you about Central America. And then pretty soon everybody is warming up to me and we're laughing and talking crap about American foreign policy and drinking tea. After a bit of that, the older man invites me back to his apartment. He has a huge library. I gift him a book that I had finished, and then he tells me what had just happened. His little brother, who was one of the younger men, was the leader of a radical group. All the other men I had met. He had overheard them getting ready to kidnap me, but he had shamed them for not being good hosts and for disrespecting him because it was his house. He said that I would be safe from then on. Nothing like finding out you were just spared from a kidnapping to make you rethink how you travel. Holy cow. Not sure I'd be able to shake that off for a while. It's pretty awesome luck that you got through that situation all right. Be careful out there. Story 2. I was stalked by a guy while walking through the Tiergarten in Berlin. I was walking around along a path, enjoying the park alone. I saw this guy standing on the edge of the walkway, just looking off into the distance. I passed him, and when I was about 20 feet away, he turned and followed after me, keeping pace. I started to take a very meandering path, even leaving the park and entering again. The guy stuck with me the whole way. Eventually, I got to a place with some sharp turns and heavy greenery. I was able to lose the line of sight and put myself up against a corner. I'd just been in Switzerland and had bought a pocket knife, so I opened the blade and held it inside my jacket pocket. I stood there, waiting, and then this guy came walking out of the path, confused and obviously trying to see where I went. When he finally spotted me, he jolted, and since I had the drop on him, he played it cool and continued walking as if he hadn't followed me there. He stopped a little way ahead, and I kept watching him. I wanted to confront him and find out why he followed me, but since I was a visitor in the country, I thought better of it. Instead, I waited until I saw a big group of people leaving and fell in with them. He started to follow me, but I finally lost him outside the garden. It unsettled me because to this day, I have no idea why he was following me. I'm a guy, and at the time, I was in my early 20s, pretty fit and at a sour disposition, so I didn't seem like a prime mugging target, but maybe he thought otherwise. Oh boy, Tiergarten is known gay cruising area. He was into you, not your wallet. He wanted to share his bratwurst with you. Story 3 I was walking to a pharmacy down a busy avenue in Robert, Morocco. It was the Feast of the King, so most people had off work and school, meaning the avenue was empty. Myself and two volunteers, all three young white females, are walking and chatting when two guys on a motorbike pass us the opposite way. They drove over the median and pulled up beside us. The guy in the back gets off and walks towards us, then pulls a machete out from underneath his flannel. Girl 1 throws her purse, girl 2 throws her phone, and both go running. Guy comes after me and I wrap my hand around my purse, had my passport, wallet, phone, etc., and he holds the machete up to my neck. I said a few choice words to him in Arabic, essentially, shame on you by Allah, which is something I was taught by locals to keep the kids I was working with at an orphanage in line. The machete man promptly appears to crap his pants. He goes after the dropped phone and purse, and I start running the rest of the way to the pharmacy. I wind up there crying, and the other two girls meet me. People are starting to congregate. Some witnessed it while driving by, while others were trying to translate for us. A woman says she'll drive us home after speaking with the security guard at the pharmacy. We agree and get into a minivan. I provide directions in Arabic, and the woman drives right past the house, blowing stop signs and ignoring traffic laws. It's then we realize we're about to get kidnapped. 
One of the two girls reached forward, opened the door of the van, and we jumped out while it was moving. Good lord, talk about out of the frying pan and into the fire. Huge props to you all for the quick thinking in those situations. May have saved your lives, but also, I am so sorry you went through something like that. To get mugged and then to let your guard down when you think you're being helped only to get nearly kidnapped? That's beyond a little traumatic. Story 4. I was traveling in Costa Rica with two flashy businessmen who were there to possibly purchase a gentleman's club. We were staying at the Radisson and asked the concierge to get us a cab to the club. We got in the cab and made sure the driver knew where we were going. We were told it was a 10 minute drive. About 7 minutes in, I realized that we were not in a touristy part of town. At all. The driver is whispering into his phone in Spanish, staring at us in the rear view mirror. I get uneasy and look at my companions who are clearly feeling the same way. We asked, are we almost there? Oh, si, uno momento. More whispering. Not good. We're being set up. It's been 10 minutes and we're in a sketchy residential area. I'm sitting in the middle and my partner opens his briefcase and hands me a pen and tells me to stab someone if I need to. What? He passes another pen to the other man. He's sitting directly behind the driver and takes his own gold pen and holds it to the driver's jugular and screams, Take us back to the Radisson right effing now. The partner snatched the driver's phone and hangs up. I'm just clutching the pen. We did make it back to the Radisson. The jewelry was deposited into the safe in the room for the rest of the trip, and we eventually made it safely to the club. I was young and naive. I had had my passport for three days at this point and didn't really get that we shouldn't have been traveling there with that amount of flashy jewelry. Story 5. I have two. One, I was flying with my family, I was young, from Fort Myers, Florida to Detroit, Michigan on Christmas Eve, or maybe Christmas morning, and someone tried to set off a bomb in Detroit's airport. Fortunately, they caught the guy before the bomb happened, but that was pretty scary to get around. Two, my friend and I were in the UK and we met a group of guys from California, I'm from Michigan. We had fun and moved on. We were on the same floor of a hotel. Later, we were in Sweden and we saw the same guys. We were waiting at the base of the mountain to climb up and booked the same guide by chance. Then we were in Greece. Now, my friends and I were all young women and these guys, random Greek guys, started grabbing at us and pulling at us. In the middle of a sunny day and we are almost being chased by these old men. No one is doing a thing. A car pulls up next to us and the guys try to shove us in. We start booking it in the other direction as we get to the corner. The California guys are there, again, by chance, which was enough to deter the Greek guys and we basically cried to them for about two hours before they walked us back to our hotel. The Cali guys and we ended up going to a beach together the next day. I never saw them again. First. Thank heavens for random kind strangers who are willing to help out. And second, screw random creepy guys who try to take advantage and worse. There are few things scarier in these threads than the creeps women have to deal with. And for that, I am so very sorry. Protect yourselves and stay safe out there, folks. And if you see someone in a bad situation, just a wave and your presence can be enough to help. Story 6. When I was a kid, my dad used to lead groups of college kids to Central and South America to build houses. One year he decided that we should ride the chicken, but from Guatemala City to Mexico City. Long trip. We got to the border and a soldier with a hell of a big machine gun got on the bus and looked around, saw that we had about 15 college girls on the bus, and then went and talked to someone on the phone. About two minutes later, a bunch of guys with machine guns got on the bus and informed us that all the males had to get off the bus and line up in front of it. I remember that we did it, but there was a hell of a lot of tension in the air as we did. Soldiers crammed into the bus. We waited. Finally, they got off the bus and we got back on and away we went. It was a whole lot of nothing really, but I remember my dad, the leader of the group, looking very pale and sweating bullets almost definitely interviewing the females to make sure they weren't being trafficked. Volunteered for AI in Mexico for like a year, and this is not uncommon at all. Story 7. I was traveling in Nicaragua several years ago when I got lost and ended up having to take a taxi at 9.30pm back to my hostel. When the taxi pulled up to the curb, the taxi driver locked the taxi door and told me that I had misunderstood the fare. He claimed I owed him 100 US dollars, which was several times more than we had agreed upon. I tried to pry the doors open from the inside, but was completely trapped. 
Thankfully, he let me out of the taxi after taking all the money I had on me. The hostel workers told me I was incredibly lucky. A few days earlier, a taxi driver had kidnapped another young female, assaulted her, then dumped her barely conscious body in a field outside town, thinking she was dead. A few local school children found her on their way to school in the morning. LPT, when traveling to Nicaragua, only take taxis that have a red stripe on the top and bottom of their license plates. They are the only legal ones, and all others are fake. I love when folks give out useful advice like this in these threads. So, there is some taxi info for any of you who might be traveling to Nicaragua. Also, if any of you have some travel safety advice, feel free to share it in the comments. Let's help keep each other safe. Story 8. In India, our bus rounded a corner in the mountains and another bus was on the other side of the curve. Both buses skidded to a stop about one foot from one another. Both drivers started laughing and poking fun at each other. We saw a bus from the 80s that fell down the mountain about 15 minutes later. Hella intense. In a three-hour taxi ride on the way to the airport in a rural part of southern India, we were approaching a busy scene with loads of people standing around something. Then we saw a guy who'd been hit off his moped. The bottom half of his body was completely mangled, blood was running through the streets, and we all thought he was dead, but all of a sudden he lifted his head off the ground and started yelling. He was on the verge of vomiting, but our driver was just shaking his head like it was an annoyance as small as seeing a piece of litter on the road, and drove right on by without even an ounce of concern. Story 9. I've mostly traveled through Europe, and the only time I've ever really felt uncomfortable was when I was groped on the metro in Rome. We were packed into the car, and I felt a hand against my back. No big deal, I live in New York City, it happens. But then the hand slipped between me and the next person, and around to near my stomach. Or maybe a pickpocket? Well, I had a money belt, so I was okay there. The hand grabbed my breast. We were so tightly packed that I couldn't turn around, and I just froze. I wanted to say stop or don't or anything at all, but at that moment every word of my Italian fled from my brain and I felt like a bucket of scalding water had been dumped over my head. The ride felt like it lasted forever, and the next stop I forced my way out of the car and out into the fresh air. Rome is so beautiful, but it felt pretty damn ugly that day. This kind of stuff just breaks my heart. Awful people can leave gross, lasting impacts on others doing this kind of crap. First off, folks, if you see crap like this, say something, because sometimes, like for this person, the shock can leave you paralyzed. Second, folks, I suggest keeping keys on you when you travel, a fake one you can afford to lose, and if someone touches you like this, you punch that key as hard as you can through their hand. You might not be able to carry a knife everywhere, but a key can work just fine. Protect yourselves if able. Story 10. I witnessed a creepy old man groping a teenager on a crowded train in Osaka. The girl was just enduring it and you can tell that she was holding back her tears. I whipped my phone out and started filming the guy which made him use his other hand which was blocked from my view. So I asked my guy friend to switch places with the girl. After that on the next stop the creepy guy got off. I asked the girl if she was okay. She thanked us and her friends also expressed their gratitude. I think all of them, all teenage girls, were aware of the groping, but I read somewhere that it is not the Japanese culture to make a scene. I was aware that this kind of thing was prevalent in Japan, but I'm still shocked to see it in person. The creepy man and the poor girl's face will be forever etched in my mind. Story 11. I was traveling by van through the mountains in the Philippines with a friend that is a really big guy. We came up to a checkpoint with soldiers searching cars. The guys were all wearing mismatched clothes and did not have any insignias on their uniforms or trucks. They searched all of our bags and weren't asking questions of the driver and Tagalog, which we did not speak. We heard them say American and we're the only two Americans on the bus. They talked for a little while and finally waved us through. Later, we told the story to another American and he said we had gone through a guerrilla controlled area where Americans had been kidnapped for ransom lately. They all agreed they did not take us because of the size of my friend. I think we got really lucky that day. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.